What is ADHD? ADHD is the most common neurodevelopmental disorder to be diagnosed in children. So even if you don't have ADHD, chances are you probably know someone who does. In this video, we're going to cover what ADHD is, how it's diagnosed, its causes, and its treatments. But before we begin, I want to thank you for watching Ben Explains. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Okay, now let's get to it. ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is a neurodevelopmental disorder and is not considered a learning disability, a mental illness, or a behavioral disorder. ADHD impacts parts of the brain that help us plan, focus, and execute tasks. Common symptoms of ADHD include trouble paying attention, controlling impulsive behaviors, and general overactivity. And while these symptoms may just seem like regular personality traits in children, those with ADHD have more extreme symptoms than those without ADHD, don't grow out of them, and the symptoms often cause distress at home, school, or with friends. ADHD is most commonly diagnosed in early childhood, and oftentimes symptoms continue into adulthood, although many adults may not even be aware that they have it. And it's really common, with about 1 in 10 children having it and about 1 in 5 adults. It is also more common in boys than in girls. Now let's talk about how to get diagnosed with ADHD. While ADHD is usually first diagnosed in the classroom, as school staff can identify symptoms, they cannot give a diagnosis. To do this, you will need to see a child psychologist or a pediatrician. While adults will need to complete a comprehensive evaluation in order to get diagnosed. There are three different subtypes of ADHD, and they are predominantly inattentive, predominantly hyperactive impulsive, and combined. Predominantly inattentive is often categorized with the difficulty staying focused or paying attention. And to get a diagnosis of predominantly inattentive, you need to have at least six of the following symptoms if you're a child, or five if you're an adult and the symptoms need to have lasted for at least six months. These symptoms include a difficulty paying close attention, making careless mistakes, problems staying focused on tasks, difficulty listening to others, difficulty following through on tasks, difficulty organizing tasks, avoiding tasks that require sustained mental effort, often losing things needed for daily life, easily distracted or forgetful. The next subtype is the hyperactive impulsive subtype and is categorized by the child seeming to be run by a motor that rarely shuts off. And it has the same six to nine or five to nine criteria as the inattentive subtype. But the symptoms include being fidgety, inability to stay seated, runs or climbs when inappropriate, unable to play quietly, always on the go, talks too much, blurts out answers before the question is finished, difficulty waiting their turn, or interrupting others. And the last subtype is combined, which, as you probably guessed, is just a combination of the other two subtypes. And it is also important to note that it is common for individuals to move from one subtype to another subtype as they move through stages of life. Now let's go over treatments for ADHD. There are two main treatments that work very well together to help people with ADHD. The first is medication, usually stimulants, that have our brain slowly release dopamine throughout the day. Stimulants are highly effective and are safe to use with very few side effects. Common stimulants used are methamphetamine and amphetamine. There are also non-stimulant options for people who don't see effects on stimulants. The other treatment is behavior therapy, which aims to teach children with ADHD skills to cope with their ADHD. These can include social skills trainings, behavior modification training, and psychotherapy. For adults, behavior therapies include learning ways to minimize distractions, increase structure in the routine, teach them management skills, as well as organizational skills. For students, there are several interventions that can help children with extreme ADHD. These could involve being enrolled in special education classes, or getting a 504 plan to get accommodations such as a modified curriculum, receiving alternative teaching techniques, getting a change in classroom setup, 
and receiving social skills instruction. If you are a parent with a child that has ADHD, it is critical that you keep structure in the child's daily routine, give the child very clear expectations, and encourage positive behaviors. Now, what causes ADHD? Well, we don't know for sure. However, there is very good evidence that there is a genetic component, as about three out of four children with ADHD have a relative that also has ADHD. There is also evidence that your chances of being diagnosed with ADHD go up if you have had a brain injury, were exposed to lead, alcohol, or tobacco during pregnancy, or if you had a premature delivery. It is also thought that ADHD is caused by not just one gene, but several, which can affect our brain. Specifically, our regulation of neurotransmitters, dopamine, and neuropronephrine, which would explain why stimulants are so effective. ADHD is a complex and common neurodevelopmental disorder that can affect people in a variety of different ways. However, there are plenty of resources and treatments available that can help people manage their ADHD so they can succeed in school and life outside of school. Thanks again for watching Ben Explains. If you liked this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. And if you want to hear me explain more things, hit the subscribe button. And while you're at it, why don't you click on one of these suggested videos?